Okay, so we have two really bare basic kind of graphs that we're going to just start off with. The first one is the empty graph. So if you have a system and you obviously have your objects in your system, but there's no relationships between those objects, you're going to describe that by utilizing an empty graph. And by empty, we mean there's no edges, so there's no relationships. Because remember, the whole idea is you're looking at the patterns of the links and relationships. So the thing that's important there is the relationships, and that's why the MT is what the MT is referring to. Then you have your trivial graph, and your trivial graph is a case where you have only one thing, or one object that you are looking at. So there's a singular object, which is a singular vertex, and that is your trivial graph. It's usually used as your base case situation, or you know, proving if something is going to work or not. Okay, so when we're describing or defining a graph, we define a graph very broadly. We said, okay, it was a set of vertices and it was a multi-set of edges or it was a collection of unordered pairs of vertices. Now, we can narrow the definition of the graph down using you know, subcategories and that's what we're going to slowly do throughout this course. We'll show other subcategories of graphs. Now, one of the first things we know is that the previous definition allowed for multiple edges and it allowed for loops. Now, the thing is, those really do complicate your life. So we have a class of graph referred to as a simple graph. And a simple graph does not allow for multi-edges and it does not allow for loops. So any unweighted, undirected graph containing no graph loops or parallel edges is referred to as a simple graph. Now, at this moment in time, you may be a little bit concerned. You'll be like, well, what's unweighted and what's undirected? So the undirected part is just like if you specify that your edge has to go from A to B, not just there is an edge that exists from A to B. We will get there a little bit later on in this module. And unweighted, eventually you'll learn that you can actually add, you know, stuff to your edges to describe the relationships. And usually that's values. And you'll be like, um, say, for example, if you're best friends with someone, your relationship is stronger than someone who you're acquaintance with. So you can contribute a weight to the relationship that that edge is representing. So again, it currently is just an unweighted, undirected graph containing no graph loops or parallel edges. There are a bunch of other subcategories of graphs, which I'm not going to write down, but I'll just discuss briefly. You have a thing called a pseudograph, and that's just a graph without any loops. Um, you have a thing called a multigraph, but a multigraph is a very debated topic of what exactly it de defines. Um, for a lot of people, it defines a graph that has a multiple edge. Some of them say it has to have tons of multiple edges. Then there's can it have loops, can it not have loops kind of thing. Is a simple graph a multigraph? Like, does it does the fact that there are no multiple edges make it not a multigraph? So there's a lot of, you know, murkiness in that definition which is why we don't go into it that much so there's also the concept of a linear graph and so on so right now we're just going okay we have the broad definition of a graph which basically just covers everything we've narrowed it down to a simple graph where there's no multiple edges and no loops we'll also and we'll focus most of our course on the simple graph but then there are going to be other graphs that we're going to encounter and look at such as a weighted graph and a directed graph and so on Okay, so next up we have an R regular graph. An R regular graph is just a very specific kind of graph where the degree of every vertice is the same. So you have a situation, and let's just use the V1, V2, V3, and V4. We can have a one regular graph. We have a one regular graph. Every vertice has a degree of one. We can check that. Degree of V1 is equal to 1. Degree of V2 is equal to 1. Degree of V3 is equal to 1. And the degree of V4 is equal to 1. And that means it's 1 regular. So when we get told the graph is R regular, it means that every single vertex in that graph has the degree R. And R is obviously just a placeholder for a number. Another example 
is if we take again the square one here, v2, v3, and v4, and we make it so that every degree is 2. So we can go check that, degree 1, degree of v2, degree of v3, and the degree of v4. And you're going to have a case of that says 2, 2, 2, and 2. So it is a two regular graph. Okay, you can also find a three regular graph for this one. So let's just go ahead and do that. And when we get to the complete graph, I want you to link up what we did here with the complete graph. So here we have a case of the degree of v1 is equal to 3. The degree of v2 is equal to 3, the degree of v4 is equal to 3, and the degree of v3 is equal to 3. It's a 3 regular graph. Okay, so we're looking at a complete graph, and a complete graph is actually a pretty cool graph because it incorporates some of the other definitions. But the whole idea behind a complete graph is that it's a simple graph, and that's a very important aspect of it. It's a simple graph which means no multiple edges or parallel edges and no loops. And what it does is it basically says, okay, for it to be complete, you need to be friends with every other person in your set, in your group. So every vertice is adjacent to every other vertice in the set which means there is a relationship between that vertice and every other vertice in the set. So say you have, you know, three vertices, V1, V2, V3. V1 must be connected to V2. V1 must be connected to V3 because V1 needs to be adjacent to V2 and V3. It must be adjacent to all the other vertices in the set, in the graph. And V2 must have the exact same, you know, function, so v2 must be adjacent to v1, and v2 must be adjacent to v3. And the same thing for v3, so v3 also has to be adjacent to every other vertice in the set. So we have a situation which we refer to as, for a complete graph, we have a symbol representation for it, and the symbol representation is k subscript n, where n is the number of vertices. Okay. And what happens with it is because the way it's set up, because, you know, every vertice must be adjacent to every other vertice, the degree of every vertice needs to be n minus 1. Why does it need to be n minus 1? Because it must be connected to every other vertice. And how many vertices are left over if you're looking at that one vertice? it's n minus 1. So that's where we get the fact that it must be n minus 1 regular because the degree of every vertice must be equal to n minus 1. Okay, so a bipartite graph is a two-color graph and the color aspect of it we will bring up a little bit later, but the bi part of it means two and that's what it means is bipartite, it's in two parts. Now for the definition of it, we talk about there exists a partition of the vertex set into disjoint sets. When we talk about disjoint sets, we mean that these sets do not overlap. They have unique elements in both of them. For example, if we had x, y, z in the one set and we had a, b, c in the other set, these sets are disjoint. Now, if we had an example of x, y, z and c and a b and c these sets are not just joint because they share an element okay so when we talk about disjoint sets they are you know they don't share any elements now for a bipartite graph to exist there has to be a way to partition your vertex set so that you have these two disjoint sets of the vertices. So all the vertices will, you know, be in either set one or set two. But there's a specific thing that needs to occur for it to be bipartite. And that is that every adjacent vertice has to be 
in the other set. And by that we mean, let's just draw an example because it's a little bit easier to understand. We have, let's start off with all our vertices being like this. Okay, now we have edges and this vertice here is adjacent to this vertice. Okay, so when we're talking about our apartheid graph, the vertices which are adjacent to each other need to be in the different sets. So we have already, we have that kind of situation, but now we have that blue one there, which means the vertice adjacent to it must be in the red vertice set. So it, that one must be red. And now the vertices adjacent to this red one that we've just colored need to be in the other set. So that must be blue. And then again, all the vertices adjacent to that blue one must be in the red set. So when we talk about it, we say, when we have, when we set it up, it must be such that the adjacent vertices fall in the separate sets. So another example of what is not a bipartite graph is if we do something like this, because when we do this, we have, okay, we have this one is, you know, that pale blue kind of color. Then we're going to have, okay, this one's adjacent. So let's color it in green. Okay. And that is adjacent to the blue one as well. So let's color it in green. But now we're sitting with a situation of, adjacent vertices in the same set. So in the green set, we have adjacent vertices. Whereas if we go back to our previous example, that was a set and that was a set. And you'll notice that there are no edges between any of the um, this vertices in those sets. So again, the apartheid graph exists if you can partition your vertices set into two disjoint sets so that every edge uh, falls in, with a, an end vertice in each set. Okay, so the end, there's one end vertice in the one set and another end vertice in the other set. And essentially what that is doing is you can see it's creating a two color kind of a system. You should be able to color it in in two colors. If you have a situation, you know, like over here, you know that it's not bipartite. So if you have adjacent vertices of the same color and there's no way out of it, it is not a bipartite graph.